So in the last video, we introduced the basic mathematical model for the Cubian. In this video, what we're going to do is get some practice working with quantum states, and especially the Ket notation uh, for the Cubian. So as you can probably recall from the last video, uh, the basic way in which we describe a quantum state is in terms of uh, state vectors, uh, linear combinations of the computational basis states uh, 0 and 1. Now, you're probably much more used to dealing with the column uh, vector notation um, from previous work, and I want to point out that this quantum state, this vector, is in fact exactly the same as this column vector with components alpha and beta. So if alpha was 0 0.8 and beta was 0.6, then yeah, we'd have the corresponding uh, components uh, over here. Um, we're working in the 0, uh, 1 uh, basis for the vector representation. So this is just, uh, to write out the obvious, it's the amplitude uh, for the 0 state, and this is the amplitude uh, for the 1 state. Uh, generally speaking, uh, you know, we don't necessarily write out all the components uh, in uh, the vector or the, the ket uh, every single time, it's often convenient to give the ket some sort of overall label. So a very common one is to write psi uh, as the label on the ket and to bundle up all this uh, information in there. Really the key point uh, to keep in mind when you're getting used to this notation is that kets are vectors, right? They're nothing more than that. Very, very simple. Uh, and, and familiar, it's just a new notation. And at first, it seems a little bit sort of unfamiliar and hard to work with, uh, but once you get used to it, it's just as easy as dealing uh, with the standard uh, notation that you've uh, most likely been, been used to for some years. Uh, in particular, you can always translate this ket notation into the standard vector notation uh, and back as well. Uh, so you can sort of, you know, you do manipulations uh, in either uh, way. Physicists uh, tend to uh, do their manipulations directly in terms of this, uh, but certainly to start, uh, I'd encourage you to do this translation uh, if you're feeling at all uncomfortable. In particular, uh, KETs, because they're just vectors, uh, they obey all the usual rules uh, for vectors, um, so sort of all the usual uh, algebraic rules. I'll give you an example in uh, just a second. Um, so a good example uh, is, for example, that, that multiplication by a scalar distributes. So to be a bit more precise, if we have the ket, the, the vector alpha 0 plus beta 1, and we multiply it by some number, let's say 2, well, you know, it's just the same as if the components are multiplied by 2. Right, it distributes across uh, addition, and that's because well, it distributes across vector addition, and these are just vectors, as I've, I've been emphasizing. Uh, so, you know, all, all the, the sort of standard rules for manipulating vectors apply. A way you could have seen this is to notice that, well, this is just, this here is the same as 2 times the vector alpha beta, which is, of course, equal to. 2 alpha and 2 beta, which is just that state uh, there. Uh, and you know, there are many similar sort of uh, ideas along the, the same line. Uh, another um, example is, uh, for example, that the state, let's say we take the, the, the state whose component, so this is the number one, let me just emphasize that. Well, this is, you know, in our column vector format is just, uh, uh, you know, as components 1 and 0, it's the same as the state 0. And if you like, it's also equal to the state 0 plus 0 times 1. Uh, again, and you can sort of verify that just by writing it out in terms of uh, the column vectors. So, you know, the, the key point to take away here, the, the details of these calculations I've done down the bottom are not so important. The key point 
uh, to take away is that cats are vectors and they obey all the usual rules uh, for vectors. And if you're ever getting confused, you can just go back and translate what I'm writing uh, in terms of uh, this vector notation and uh, hopefully all should become clear. Okay, so that's all I want to say about these uh, simple uh, rules for manipulating uh, quantum states. In the next video, we're going to move on and look at uh, our first example of a quantum uh, logic gate, so something that can be used to manipulate uh, quantum information. And we're going to look at a very simple quantum logic gate, the quantum not gate. It's simple, uh, but it turns out to be very important in doing uh, quantum computations. Uh, and so it's a good starting point uh, for us to work with.